A young American woman's fate will soon be decided in an Italian courtroom. American student Amanda Knox back on trial for the murder of her British roommate. Today, a court is examining DNA evidence that her defense says could set her free. The jury was shown the knife this morning, the knife that may have been used as the murder weapon. We're speaking exclusively now to Amanda's father, who joins us from Perugia, Italy, with more about that. Kurt Knox joining us. Good to have you back with us this morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, it, talk to us a little bit. Um, the knife was actually shown uh, this morning as evidence in, in court today. Uh, what did you take away from that, from the testimony this morning, from the, from the experts who testified about this knife? Well, it was a very brief showing of the knife, but one of the court-appointed experts actually stated in his testimony this morning that the compatibility of this knife to the wounds, one of the wounds on Meredith's neck was virtually non-compatible. And therefore, uh, you know, I think it strikes uh, a hit to the prosecution's case that much further. And because this was, as you pointed out, this was a court-appointed expert, um, you also, I know, yesterday, uh, when court resumed after a two-month recess, we should say, yesterday a, a shoe print was shown. It was actually a shoe print that I believe was found on the bath mat in the apartment, which all along the prosecution, I think, had been saying belonged to uh, Rafael, your, your daughter's ex-boyfriend, who, who was also um, pointed out in this crime. But that's not what you saw in court on Friday. That's true. There was a expert, that uh, footprint expert, that came in, and the bloody footprint that the prosecution has asserted was Rafael Salechito's uh, in the bathroom uh, was in fact essentially thrown out, and they've attributed it to the person that's already in prison, Rudy Gade. Mm -hmm. Um, y you said recently, "quote uh, No speck of Amanda in the room where Meredith Kircher lost her life." was found. Are you feeling like, especially seeing the evidence that's being brought that's in, that, that your daughter may be vindicated? I know you believe in her wholeheartedly. I absolutely do. She had no part of this crime. I mean, just pure common sense as it relates to the room. There's no hair follicle of her, no blood evidence of her, no DNA whatsoever in that room. And how they can attribute her to this particular crime is beyond me. And I I hope to see the light at the end of the tunnel here very soon. Has there been anything that really stood out to you, one of the biggest surprises that's come across so far in terms of evidence and testimony? Well, I think as we go through each individual piece of evidence, as the defense has their opportunity to provide their side of the case, it continues to break down the prosecution's uh, theory to this whole crime. And hopefully we're coming to the end of the, the journey here and we'll be able to bring her home soon. Uh, Kurt, a, a two-month recess, as we mentioned. What has that time been like, uh, both for you and your daughter? And how, how's Amanda holding up at this point? Well, you know, I, she's obviously very disappointed. It, it's extremely hot over here during the summertime in Italy. She's in a concrete prison with no air conditioning, essentially baking. And knowing that you're there for something that you had no part of makes it that much more difficult. But she's happy that the uh, trial has re you know, begun again, and she sees the light at the end of the tunnel. And hopefully you will have uh, some sort of a verdict soon. I know there's some pressure to get this wrapped up before mid-November. Kurt Knox, really appreciate you taking some time for us today. I know you're heading back into court soon.